Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I want to introduce to you an ICO that has been a hot discussion on our Telegram chat and that is none other than the ICO One Ledger. One Ledger is in my opinion a very promising ICO. They don't have a white list but what they are going to have is a first come first serve KYC that will be starting on the 9th of May. Given that they already have over 16,000 members on their Telegram chat, I think this is going to be a very hot ICO that will sell out very quickly. If you are interested to find out what One Ledger is all about, keep watching this video. Blockchain is a really great technology with many great features, but as a technology, it is really different from legacy systems, meaning the main systems that the world uses. And thus, between blockchain and the legacy systems, the two systems have great difficulty communicating with each other. And that is one of the major deterrents to mass adoption of blockchain. One ledger introduces itself as a universal blockchain protocol enabling cross-ledger access through business modularization. In simple terms, what this means is that One Ledger is a blockchain project that focuses on building a bridge between blockchain and legacy systems, particularly businesses. For those who are more familiar with the crypto scene, we call this type of project a project that focuses on interoperability. There are many different types of interoperability projects in the market, and each of them will try to build that bridge between legacy systems and blockchain systems by different means. The key to understanding what makes an interoperability project unique is to understand what type of bridge are they building. For example, one chain tries to build the bridge by providing services. Ontology tries to build the bridge by creating a trust system and universal ID. Icon tries to do it by creating smart contracts for smart contracts, etc. We have done separate reviews for each of these projects. Feel free to check them out in your own time. Now, one ledger tries to build the bridge in three parts. There is an API, the protocol, and the side chains. If you understand these three aspects of One Ledger, you understand what the One Ledger project is all about. For this reason, I will start this review by giving you a simple explanation of their tech. But if the tech doesn't interest you, feel free to jump forward about 10 minutes into this video. The first aspect we're going to talk about is their API gateway. What is an API? An API is essentially an app for an app. So for example, on your phone, you might have the Uber app. And on the Uber app, you have various features. Example, an identification feature, a GPS feature, an ordering and payment feature. All of these features are called APIs. They are not the actual apps. They are like the apps for the apps. The significance of one ledger connecting to legacy systems via app or API, sorry, is, the, is that businesses can continue to use whatever legacy systems they were previously using, example SAP for their accounting, and all they need to do is to install an API into their accounting software so that there is an option in their existing software that they can click to send the information to One Ledger API gateway. This is vastly different from projects that would build a blockchain app and expect the new business to stop using their current working system and swap over to a new app that they are completely unfamiliar with. So the API makes One Ledger as a blockchain project very easy to be adopted. There are only a few projects in the blockchain space that do this currently and I think that projects with this feature will potentially be very attractive to businesses because they are not asking the business to come to the blockchain world, they are bringing the blockchain to businesses and thus minimizing costs and risk. Now before I dive into the protocol and side chains, which are the two other major aspects of one ledger, I want to first briefly explain the difference between a protocol and a platform. Many times when we review a blockchain platform project, we use these two terms interchangeably. But understanding the subtle differences between the two terms will help us to understand what one ledger is. A platform is the technology on which other programs or blockchains are built upon. A protocol, on the other hand, is the system of rules that govern the communication. So for example, if you're using a Windows PC, Windows is your platform and the language which it uses to communicate with the programs installed on it is called the protocol. In the case of One Ledger, the side chains which we will talk about later are the blockchains that are built on the platform, but the protocol which we are going to discuss now is the main communication engine of the, uh, the whole project. 
The protocol of One Ledger has a few interesting features. The first is the smart identity management platform. So in blockchain, a person's identity can be considered their key. A person has what we call a private key as well as a public key. The public key is what you show others and they can use that as key or address to send you funds. The private key is what you hold private and in secret so that you use this key to send funds to other people. As a protocol, one ledger aims to connect the legacy systems to multiple different blockchains, example to Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. And each of those blockchains will produce at least one public key for the user. Instead of dealing with each individual key and identity, one ledger creates what is known as a master key for each individual in this protocol. This key can serve both public and private purposes and can also interact with any of the public chains uh, attached to one ledger. The second interesting feature they have is what is known as a chain code service. So at some point, businesses may wish to develop their own dApps or decentralized apps. When this happens, depending on which platform they wish to interact with, example Bitcoin, NEO, Ethereum, etc., they will have to write and deploy smart contracts in different multiple languages because each platform utilizes a different language. One ledger is developing an SDK which will function as a master contract which will be a master copy of the contract that can then be easily translated into each language of choice. So this is a feature that will really save a lot of time and effort for the user. The third feature they have is called a programming interface. Remember how we said that the legacy systems will interact with uh, the protocols by APIs? The programming interface is like a library of available APIs that the user can use, but it's also the librarian that manages the processing of those APIs. So these three aspects, the smart identity, the chain code service, and the programming interface collectively make up the protocol of one ledger. Now let's talk about the platform aspect of one ledger. Where normally when you have a project uh, that serves as interoperability, uh, after you go through the protocol phase, the protocol will co facilitate communication with one blockchain, which is usually the native blockchain. In this case, it will be the one ledger blockchain. However, in this case, in this project, one ledger is blockchain agnostic, meaning it will allow and facilitate communications with various other blockchains to allow users to have the choice of utilizing the benefits of many other blockchains. So then users are not just limited to utilizing the one ledger blockchain. They can use Bitcoin. They can interact with Ethereum. They can choose to pay through Dash or any other cryptocurrency that they want. The way one ledger achieves this is by building what is known as side chains. Think of side chains like mini blockchains that for each user that is tailor made. So each user can literally create or tailor make their own mini blockchain on the one ledger blockchain. The only requirement that they need is that the other cryptocurrency they want to use has to use what is known as a HTLC or a hash time lock contract to synchronize with the side chain. HTLC is a common technology that is compatible with most cryptocurrencies. The one ledger project also uses a three layer consensus in order to enable the integration effectively with different blockchain projects. The first layer of consensus is the business initialization, which is basically a contract to define the roles and behavior of business participation. The second consensus is the one ledger channel consensus, and this is the part of the consensus that executes the interactions. This will require the use of a Byzantine fault tolerant partial sync, where all participants on the site chain need to vote and a consensus of more than two thirds is required to go ahead. The third layer is the public chain consensus, which helps to transfer assets or data across the different chains. And once again, two thirds of the side chain vote nodes must validate the transaction. And that's basically the tech of one ledger summarized in a nutshell. Feel free to dive into their white paper for more details. I think the tech of this project is quite complicated because there are so many different aspects that they are trying to achieve. If one ledger does manage to achieve uh, what all the different features that they are trying to, then it will be a very attractive platform because they will be offering multiple different features on a single platform. Some of the um, potential features and users that they could have would include a platform that is one of the easiest to deploy dApps, a platform with 
uh, the ability to move business traffic with very high performance, meaning uh, moving large volumes of uh, transactions. So this will be very attractive to big businesses. They, offer, they also offer cross-chain access with transparency and traceability. And these two features will open them up to um, businesses such as asset identification and transparency flow. So we're talking about things like um, a donation, a huge donation where you have to track the processing of the donation uh, funds. Other things that they could get involved in is things like business flow, where we're talking about supply chain management and e-commerce flow. The thing to note about this um, project is that right now they don't have a working prototype or what we call an MVP, a minimal viable product. So all of this is still in the conceptual phase. However, they are due to release their MVP next month in June. So that's really soon. And that will really capture the attention of the market if they can re uh, produce an MVP to show that their technology that they're proposing is not just conceptual and theoretical, but something that can actually be practically achieved. This is the team behind the project. It's an impressive team that definitely knows what they are doing. The guy leading the project is David Chow, their CEO. David Chow has over 10 years of enterprise architect experience. He's also worked on a magnitude of technical projects for several Fortune 500 enterprises. He's also previously worked at IBM Toronto Lab on the development of DB2 and WebSphere Commerce Core Engine. And as a specialist in supply chain payments e-commerce, David has helped large enterprises to grow exponentially, including Home Depot, Sears, and Toshiba. He's also currently an active member in both Hyperledger and blockchain community. The next person on their resume is Alex Todd, who is the Chief Technological Advisor. He's a pioneer in fintech entrepreneur space. He's the founder and CEO of trust to pay and the former CTO of Presto. He has previously led the creation of innovative industry engagement programs, which has contributed to an estimated value of over $200 million over five years. He has also spent his career exploring business opportunities in the emerging and disruptive technology space and is currently launching a social enterprise that uses blockchain technology to help 5 billion working age people prosper. Stephen Lee is their lead engineer and he's a senior software developer and subject matter expert in distributed application innovation. He's a former senior consultant for Morgan Stanley and the Deutsche Bank. He's also worked in IBM and Microsoft previously. He has a deep understanding of both the front-end and back-end system. He's also embracing the blockchain revolution and becoming an expert in Solidity smart contract development on Ethereum. And you can go through their website to check out the individual LinkedIn profiles for more information. But overall, I would summarize that they do come across as a very reliable team. These are their advisors, and their advisors are also a very impressive list of people that includes notable names like Trevor Kovaco, who is the CEO of Digital Assets International and the CEO of Polymath Network, and one of the most successful angel investors in Canada. They also have Matthew Neymar on board, a former IBM Center of Excellence postdoctoral fellow in high performance computing in the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Sam Onat Yumas, he's a veteran venture investor, primarily in the fintech and biotech verticals. He co-founded the Debs app, which is the first digital currency denominated fund that invested in Fatcom, Ethereum, MadeSafe, and other early tokens. Hmm. Mervin Cheng, who is a managing partner and CIO at his own venture firm, and he focuses on infrastructure and Fed protocols with early stage multi-million dollar investments in uh, projects such as our chain, Zilliqa, Luzial, Elastos, Dragon Chain, POA, OneChain, Tita, Chainlink, and others like Quantstem, Gifto, Kyber Network. Wow. So with years of cryptocurrency experience, he specializes in helping projects through the entire ICO process from white paper to token sales structure and connections with top influencers, reviewers, funds, and exchanges. So not only are these guys very experienced, they also have a great track record in picking winning blockchain projects. And they are also very well connected and helping to support the One Ledger project both internally within the project and its functioning, as well as externally with linking them up with good connections. These are their partners and investors. And similarly, we see a lot of capital firms and this reconfirms the fact that a lot of big professional investors are interested in this project, which is a great sign for us as lay investors. 
Now we come to their token distribution. The key things here to note are things like the 35% sales di distribution, which is a very fair distribution, and their company reserve is only 10%. So it's not a crazy amount like 80% in some other distributions. Now with the exception of the public sale that's going to happen soon, everything else has a lock-in period, which means the, the amount that is allocated to their marketing and long-term partners or the amount that the company themselves hold all have lock-in periods ranging anywhere between 12 to 24 months. Also, the release of the lock-in periods will not be done suddenly, but will be released slowly in staggered amounts, either monthly or quarterly for different groups. This staggering release of funds means that they is their attempt to try and avoid sudden uh, dumps of the coin. Now, the most attractive thing to me about this ICO is actually their very low hard cap in the upcoming ICO. They only have a hard cap of 15 million USD. That is very, very low. A high profile project like this with a strong social community and currently their Telegram already has over 16,000 members. Okay, I would imagine that uh, a project like this could aim for a hard cap anywhere between 30 to 50 million. And they're aiming for literally half to a third of what they could aim, I think. So the low hard cap for this project means two things to me. Firstly, it means that a lot of people are going to miss out and not be able to buy as much as of the ICO as they would like because each person is going to have a cap. The second point is that there is going to be FOMO when this coin hits the market. This is because those who are involved in the ICO most likely are un will be unable to buy as much as they would like to. But this is also considering the fact that there are people who are will be unable to get involved in the ICO. This means potential investors from China, USA, etc. who will know of this project but they can't get into the ICO because of national regulations. So once this coin hits the exchanges, I do expect a lot of FOMO, a lot of people trying to jump in and buy the coin as early as possible. Given that there is no lock-in for those who buy the coin at public sale, it means that once you buy your coin at ICO, you can almost immediately sell it at exchanges. So this is potentially going to cost a lot of trading volume uh, when it first hits the market. and and what I think will happen is that when the coin first hits the market, it's going to go up several fold uh, before everyone kind of exhausts all their buying opportunities and then it will self-correct down and, and fall back down uh, a little bit ahead. But basically as an ICO investor, the initial rise, uh, which I think will happen, is what uh, or is where the short-term gains will be. Now, yesterday, the company actually announced that they will be reducing the token price to 10% of its original plan cost. So originally, the token was meant to hit about 50 cents a token, and they're going to reduce it down to just 5 cents per token. Uh, they're going to compensate for this, though, by increasing the token supply by 10 times. So this means that uh, I'm not really sure what this means, actually, because the overall hard cap that they are raising is still the same, which is 15 million USD. So proportionally, the actual value of the token hasn't actually changed. It just sounds like the token's a lot cheaper. But when you buy the token, your token's worth a lot less because they have actually inflated the token supply by 10 times. So uh, mathematically, actually, nothing has changed. What they have done to me doesn't make or uh, hasn't made this um, token any uh, better or worse as an investment. The actual KYC will be happening on 12 p.m. the 9th of May in Eastern Standard Time, and it will end on the 12th. Uh, so it will end on the 16th of May at 12 p.m. again Eastern Standard Time. Now this will come as a first come first serve basis. And I'll be very surprised if it goes all the way to the 16th of May. I suspect it will get filled up way before that. The requirements that you need to participate in the KYC include a photo ID, selfie, proof of residential address, an Ethereum address, and a description of the source of funds. So something like a pretty standard KYC. However, the catch is that the KYC is tied to what is known as an ambassador program. What the ambassador program means is that not everyone will get the same allocation of allowed ICO investment, which means that the amount that you as an investor can invest into the ICO will be influenced by how much you advertise the project. And based on how much you advertise the project, there are different tiers of grading. So the more ambassador points that you have, the more you can buy at the ICO stage. So do check out the Telegram group for the links to the details as well as more details of the actual ambassador program itself. 
Now, one last thing to cover before we end, and that is their roadmap. There are a few upcoming events. The most notable, which we mentioned before, is their minimal viable product. The MVP is due in June. And I would expect it's roughly around June or July that they will hit the exchanges. So basically, the end of the second quarter is when I expect a lot of hype and FOMO for this coin on the market. Uh, the third and fourth quarter of this year, the second half, is where they have massive technological milestones. Basically, everything about their technology, from the API to the identity management system to the smart contract system, etc., is all going to happen within the second half of this year. 2019, most likely the early 2019, is when the first version of One Ledger platform will be released. My final opinion on this project is that I think personally in the short term, because of its very low hard cap and the no lock-in period, and the fact that it's a great product with a great team and a very big social media group at the moment, I think it's a very promising ICO with very high short-term potential profits. In the long-term scheme of things, uh, the success of the project will be dependent on two things in my opinion. The first is whether or not they can actually deliver a working product. I think many investors underestimate how difficult it is to really deliver a working blockchain product. So personally, until an MVP is released, a project remains a very high risk investment to me. Secondly will be about market penetration. One Ledger is a very good project, but there are also other very good projects like OneChain who are already in the space with slightly quicker roadmaps than One Ledger. So it's still very early days for crypto, and but people are already starting to snatch up very big partnerships out there. So moving forward, the success of One Ledger will really come down to whether or not they can establish the market penetration. Uh, ahead of others. The thing that they do have going for them is a very strong team of advisors with a lot of blockchain connections already. The other thing that will also affect their market penetration or the adoption of the project is the kind of legacy systems that their API can be implemented to. Okay, um, there is no point to create an API for a legacy system that is only used by 10 companies out there, okay? You want to create APIs for large legacy systems such as the SAP, which is like the main accounting program that is used by a lot of Fortune 500 companies, right? So I'm assuming that, you know, the, the major um, legacy programs out there, which there are not that many, okay, uh, such as SAP is the one, are the ones that one ledger will start to target. But actually in the white paper, they don't actually say which programs they are building APIs for. Okay, so moving forward, if I was an investor in this um, project, I would probably ask the team on their social media just to clarify which um, uh, legacy programs they are aiming to start with. And that's it, guys. Those are my thoughts on One Ledger. Uh, always, this is not a professional opinion or advice. It's merely my personal thoughts and uh, opinions as I research this project for myself. So please always do your own research and make your own decision. Nonetheless, I hope you found this video somewhat helpful and if you like this video, do give us a like and subscribe to help us to grow our channel and so that you don't miss out on any of our future content. We also have a Telegram group which is very active and growing nicely and where our community members point out interesting new projects like this one and where you guys get to poll as well on what coin should we review next. I would also love to have a chat with you guys if you are on Telegram, so if possible, do drop in and say hi. I hope that you guys have been having a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we will catch you next time.